What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing my match review, match reaction and match analysis of Manchester City's comprehensive 3-0 victory over the young boys of Burn in the Champions League which does for Manchester City's place in the last 16 of the Champions League. It does mean that Manchester City now just need to avoid defeat against RB Leipzig in three weeks time to confirm our place in the last 16 as the first place team as well which will be Man City's next mission but we've got plenty of big games coming up in the Premier League and we saw that with the team selection here that Man City do have one eye on them big games coming up but before I do crack on with this video make sure like always if you are enjoying the content do subscribe it is free social media links there in the description if you want to go and check out my Twitter Instagram and TikTok email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries do leave a thumbs up, 100 likes is the aim, and do let me know your thoughts as well in the comments below. So, let's start with that team selection, because Manchester City rotated this team. I think the biggest call was going with Erling Haaland. I was convinced we would not be starting Erling Haaland. I thought it would be foolish to start Erling Haaland in this game. He limped off at half-time against Bournemouth at the weekend. We knew he was touch and go. I wasn't concerned about him not featuring against Chelsea, but I thought City wouldn't run the risk here of Erling Haaland starting this game. I thought he may be in the squad, but not starting this game. And there's Pep Guardiola rotating the team, but bam, Erling Haaland, you're starting the game. Big call by Pep Guardiola, and it pays off. He comes out with a brace, couple more goals for Manchester City, oozing more confidence, scoring a penalty, a very well taken third goal for Manchester City in this game, and Erling Haaland second as well. It was a beautiful 20-yard strike across the goalkeeper. Chelsea... Watch out, Erling Haaland, he is well and truly back to his scintillating best, if you ask me, looking as sharp as ever and as deadly in front of goal, which is going to terrify a lot of Premier League defenders out there. Chelsea all have been watching that game thinking, wow, how are we going to deal with with Erling Haaland in that game rather than then thinking about exposing high lines and showing what we did against Tottenham Hotspur how about they start thinking about what are they going to do to stop Manchester City because this City team it's on a roll and it's not stopping and uh, Stamford Bridge next in sight for Manchester City uh, and as shown here with a rotated team out we completely dominated this game we limited young boys of burn to absolutely nothing no shots nothing they created nothing it was a firm blue wall there for Manchester City and they made it look so easy and I'll tell you right now that performance that City put out there was not an easy performance at all and they completely dominated that game once more showing their dominance at the Etihad Stadium any team that's coming to the Etihad we've got Liverpool we've got Tottenham Hotspur coming up honestly they'll be quaking at the thought of playing Manchester City because City are just that good in my complete honest opinion. Now, in terms of uh, the other selections from this game, Manuel Akanji was selected to start this game. Kyle Walker came in late on, uh, apparently due to illness for Akanji, so hopefully that's not too serious, and uh, he will be good to go uh, for Sunday's game against Chelsea, even if it is just an option from the bench. It's always good to have them options because you never know if you are going to need them, in particular in a big Premier League game as well. It can be very physically demanding. Uh, also saw some big calls. Rodri not playing yet. Man City managed to completely dominate that midfield. I didn't think young boys of Burn were that good in their midfield play in this game. Uh, their ability to move the ball from defence into midfield and getting their attack involved was completely non-existent, mainly due to how good and how organised Manchester City were. But also, I thought young boys didn't really push the issue that much. They were more preoccupied with trying to get physical with Manchester City there time and time again you saw the likes of Mateus Nunes and Phil Foden driving at their midfield and just skipping by them honestly if City were in top form at their creative best and clinical in front of goal this could have been five six or even more for Manchester City it was that much of a good performance and we did that well and we looked so much in control you forget Rodri he's the most important midfield player for me for Manchester City 
He wasn't playing. And to me, you don't really feel the impact because you have John Stones, who to me is equally as good in that position and that role for Manchester City. So it just shows to me how important it is to make sure that if Rodri isn't available, we do have John Stones available. Not having either of them has a serious effect on the team. And that's where you saw that little dip in form from Manchester City and we didn't have either of them players available. When we've got both of them, we're at our best. You got either of them, we're still very, very good. And that was demonstrated here in this game as well. Rodri wasn't playing. We didn't feel the impact of that. We didn't have Bernardo Silva. We didn't have Hurley and Alvarez. It was a rotated team and it still got the job done very convincingly for Manchester City. Jack Grealish grabs himself an assist that will make him feel a little bit better. However, if he wants to be starting games, to me, I need to be seeing a little bit more from him. I wanted him to get goals and assists. He's managed to do that. I didn't think this game was the most suitable game for him. And you might think I'm a bit crazy when I say this, but Jack Grealish thrives when teams are going to have a real pop at Manchester City. And I think Pep may have been fearful that young boys may have that pop, like we saw in Switzerland a couple of weeks ago it didn't really happen but the likes of Chelsea, Liverpool, Spurs Villa away from home they will have a go at Manchester City so Jack Grealish has got a big role to play in them games if you ask me has he done enough though to be starting at the weekend well Foden had a brilliant game Bernardo Silva looks undroppable uh, I know he's been rotated for this game but Bernardo Silva has to start on Sunday and Jeremy Doku is on fire literally he is having an insane season how do we make room for Jack Grealish? Because surely somebody who can control the game as well from that wide position as well as what Jack Grealish can has to be starting that game. But how do you find room for him? That, to me, is the biggest selection headache that Pep Guardiola's got. I think Phil Foden's just given him another little headache. Well-taken goal for that second goal. All of a sudden now, do you move Foden into the middle? Do you go with Bernardo Silva out wide? Do you change them over and put Bernardo into a deeper role and let Foden go out wide? Do you go with Doku and Grealish? Do you go with uh, Foden and Grealish? Do you go with Bernardo and Grealish? Bernardo and Doku? Foden and Doku? What do we go with against Chelsea? There is a little bit of a selection headache there, and that's been caused by this match. It's a good selection headache, if you ask me. What do we go with? Do let me know in the comments below. Uh, I don't really think there's too much left to add on. City have qualified for the last 16 of the Champions League. We're not quite in first place, uh, signed and sealed as of yet. We are in first, but we've not got that mathematically wrapped up. We just need to avoid defeat against RB Leipzig in three weeks' time. We can even afford a defeat as long as it's only by one goal, as it doesn't bet our result that we got in Germany and they'll work on head-to-heads then they'll go on goal difference and this convincing win here for Manchester City won't do our goal difference any harm whatsoever so we've got another big game coming up in the Champions League there's no real rest here for the wicked we can do a bit of rotation of course with our big Premier League matches coming up after the international break but there are problems to think about after the international break right now all focus needs to go on to Chelsea. City just gone back top of the Premier League. Spurs have lost their home game against Chelsea. Chelsea have managed to per uh, per persevere through that game somehow yesterday. Despite Spurs being down to nine men, they've still managed to make hard work of it, yet they've come out with a convincing win, and all of a sudden they're sitting on top of the world. Everyone's speaking about Tottenham Hotspur's heroic defensive performances. Chelsea won that game by four goals to one. That's what that game shows to me. It shows to me that if they have their shooting boots on, they can hurt Manchester City. They didn't have them on against Spurs and still managed to come away with four goals. So Manchester City need a good performance if we're to get a win at Stamford Bridge. Not an easy thing to do. And following them games up with home matches against Liverpool, against Spurs, away against Villa, our next four Premier League games and a game against Leipzig sandwiched between that game between Liverpool and Spurs. Not going to be easy for Manchester City. We know what it takes to beat these teams. We know what it takes to take control of the position that we are in. And you do that by taking it one game at a time. We've got the job done here. We're in the last 16 of the Champions League. Now it's time to focus on Chelsea away and trying to win that game. Pick up a win there and all of a sudden, the wheels well and truly in motion for Manchester City to try and do a historic four Premier League wins in a row. Right now, though, we're in the last 16 of the Champions League. We could start thinking about doing back-to-back -back Champions League trophies, which would be history in itself for Manchester City for this evening. Beat Young Boys by three goals to nil. Clean, comprehensive and uh, confident performance from City. 
job done. So thank you so much for watching. Much appreciated. Do subscribe if you are new around here. It is free to subscribe. Also, don't forget social media links. They're in the description if you want to go and check out my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you did enjoy the video. 100 likes is the aim. And do let me know your thoughts as well in the comments below. And I'll see you all for the build-up for that big Chelsea game at the weekend. So I've been JSGC. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well. Peace. Ciao for now. <laughs>